So hi, uh, my name is Suzanne Lang and I am the director of the Southport CoLab and I'd like to welcome everybody here today. Um, I have with me Andre Pomegranate and we're going to have a conversation um, about anxiety today. So um, Andre, if you would uh, please introduce yourself. Sure. Um, thank you for having me. I am actually, um, I'm a TSS parent as well. So that's how Suzanne and I connected. Um, I am also a licensed professional counselor. I am a therapist. I have a private practice in Westport, Connecticut, and I work with adolescents and I work with young adults and I also do a lot of parenting work. Um, so I'm super happy to be here today and to talk to you a little bit about anxiety. Thank you. So I'm going to kick it off with the first question. Um, I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about um, how anxiety affects us. Um, and in general terms, can you tell us um, what happens to us when we feel anxious? Yeah. So, you know, I think just remembering that anxiety is a very normal, biological, and very appropriate response to things that make us feel anxious. I think that's important to remember, right? Anxiety serves a really important function for all of us. Um, it helps to keep us safe, right? And it can also motivate us. So we need to have that, uh, we need anxiety in our life. Um, and I think the question becomes, how do we manage it? So I just wanna briefly explain what happens to us when we feel anxious. So there's a part of our brain called the amygdala and it sits closer to the back of the brain. It's the part of the brain that's very um, emotive, it's impulsive, it's very very reactionary and what happens is that it triggers um, our body's fight or flight response. So when we encounter a stressor, something that makes us feel anxious, our amygdala, if you will, sounds the body's alarm system. And as a result, we get a flood of neurochemicals, things like adrenaline and cortisol, which is one of our stress hormones. And these chemicals are really important because what they do is they enhance our reflexes. They enhance our heart rate, circulation, agility. Um, and those are all things we need in order to prepare our body to fight or flight, right? So when that activation occurs, our body prepares itself, right? So if you go back to primitive days, right? There were two options when we encountered a physical stressor. It was you stayed to fight it or you ran, right? So when those cortisol, adrenaline get released, it really serves to prep our body, okay? So the big difference though today is that we don't necessarily encounter those physical threats. The threats that we encounter are more psychological in nature, right? And so what happens is we don't necessarily burn off those neurochemicals like we would if we were kind of staying and fighting or running. And the buildup of those neurochemicals can actually create a lot of physical sensations that feel uncomfortable for us. So um, understanding that that process is happening for us and then starting to get in tune with what is that discomfort and where do we feel it can be really helpful. That's, that's great, thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of those physical symptoms that we might feel that um, maybe if we, if we stayed and fought or we ran, we wouldn't feel those symptoms. But um, I know that a, a lot of, especially children, um, feel different symptoms. And sometimes we don't always connect that to um, anxiety. So can you talk about what some of those might be for different people? Yeah, I mean, making the mind-body connection is really important. Um, and so, you know, thinking about what happens when we get that surge of neurochemicals for some of us. So think about yourself, right? And then you can think about your child. Think about how do you experience anxiety? So for some of us, we get, we can feel our heart racing, right? That's the increased heart rate. And that's really important because what's that, what that's doing is it's 
securing that the blood flow goes to the extremities, right? So some of us feel heart palpitations, um, some of us start breathing a little more quickly, and that's because oxygen and dioxide can become imbalanced in our system. Um, some of us get upset stomachs. For kids, generally, that presents as butterflies. And that's a result of digestion being slowed down as a result of the neurochemical surge, right? Because the body needs to preserve that energy for its extremities, right? To get out of there or to stay and fight. Um, some of us, including our kids, experience feelings of sadness or anger. That's very common. Again, that's because our amygdalas, which have sort of signaled our body's alarm system, are on high alert, right? And the amygdala, like I said, is very emotional. It's the very emotional part of our brain. And so um, it experiences sadness and anger um, very commonly. Some of us get sweaty palms. That's because our sweat glands have become activated. Um, some of us have to go to the bathroom more often, especially our kids, right? They have this urge to, to go to the bathroom and that's because their bladders are tightening as a result of the neurochemicals. Some of us feel a little more shaky. Our startle response has been activated. Some of us experience, including our kids, a tightness in our throat, okay? So all of these physical symptoms are a direct result of what we're experiencing because of that sort of alarm system being sounded. Mm. So that's really interesting. There were a few there that I wouldn't have thought of, like the throat tightening. Yeah. Um, and I'm guessing that a lot of us as parents, as well as our kids are not connecting those specific symptoms to anxiety. Um, and so can you talk a little bit about how you can help your children to make those connections um, and why it's important to make them. Yeah, I mean, it's such a, this would be such an important part of helping our kids understand how they manage anxiety. And that, that first step to me is educating them around sort of this connection between mind and body. So if you notice that your child was experiencing some of these physical symptoms, just saying out loud to them, like, hey, I noticed that like your tummy hurts and you're also feeling really stressed about whatever it is. Do you know that those are connected, right? Your body is sending you a message that it feels stress. So I think however you choose to do it, helping educate our kids around how their bodies experience the stress is really, really helpful. It's helpful, one, because I think for some kids, they aren't making the connections so that when they experience some of those physical symptoms, they feel like maybe something's wrong with them or some of these symptoms may actually even embarrass them. So just by normalizing that this is just a natural way that your body's responding can really give them some comfort. And the other thing is we know with anxiety, one of the ways that we can handle things that make us feel anxious is we feel better when we have some control there. So if you can educate your kid about some of these physical symptoms, and how it's relating to how they're feeling, that can be very empowering for a child. It can help to give them a sense of control and that kind of right out of the gate is very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the empowerment piece is really helpful, I think, um, especially for kids who are struggling with other things, for sure. um, or anything that's making them feel anxious. For sure. Um, so um, what is the first thing that you think we should do when our child is feeling anxious? So I always try to tell parents, and I know this is so hard, but the first thing that we need to do with a kid who feels anxious is we need to just help them calm down, right? Like think about you and I, I know when I feel really anxious about something, I can't think straight, right? And that's because our amygdalas are kind of speaking to us more than like the prefrontal cortex of our brain, that kind of smart, rational, logical part of our brain. So. I always try to encourage parents when they when they experience their child feeling really anxious and this is like in those moments where you can see those physical symptoms playing out and you can just get the sense that like it's not going to make any sense to try to help them through anything until you can get them to calm down so with that you know 
I know we all say this and it can sound kind of gimmicky, but it really does work and it matters. We need to help our kids take some deep breaths, right? Because what happens is when we take deep, strong breaths, we initiate the relaxation response, okay? And that will naturally calm the body, right? It, it starts to slower our heart rate. When our heart rate slows down, some of those other physical symptoms start to dissipate. And so most importantly, until we're calm, we can't think logically about what the next step is. So sometimes supporting our kids when they feel anxious is really just sitting with them and helping them calm down. That may be as far as you get, but that in itself can be so incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. So um, I just often remind parents that there's not going to be anything that, that's very productive um, in terms of support and help for a child until we get our kids in a more relaxed state and sort of a framework in which they're ready to go to the next part of whatever that looks like. Right. And even giving them that tool of being able to stop and take a couple of deep breaths, I think is empowering. Um, and you can actually feel it in your body helping you to relax. Yeah. Um, so yeah. helping to make those mind body connections, which is awesome. Yeah. And like for the little kids, I often say to parents, teach them to do hot cocoa breathing, where you imagine you're holding like a hot mug of hot cocoa and you take a nice deep breath in through your nose. So you smell and then you hold it for a few seconds and then you blow the hot cocoa cool. Right. So then it's and then, you know, if you're, they're older, you can just help them. You know, sometimes I tell kids, put your hand on your heart and just take some deep, long breaths so they can actually feel their heart starting to slow down. Um, but any way you can get kids to just slow their heart rate down, they're going to become more relaxed and ready to kind of think about what they need to do next. Right, right. And much more productive than just saying relax. <laughs> Like when we say to a kid like who's stressed, well, just don't worry. And yeah. actually, like we know that that actually causes them more stress because they're like, wait a minute, I am worried. You're supposed to be somebody that's going to help me not worry. And you're telling me like, don't worry. You know yeah. what I mean? It's very yeah. counterproductive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I understand that you do cognitive behavioral, behavioral therapy or CBT in your practice. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that is? Um, and how that approach is helpful um, when you're parenting an anxious child. Yeah, so CBT, the whole sort of tenant of CBT is helping people to reframe the way they think about things that make them anxious. I think a lot of us tend to think that situations make us feel anxious, but in actuality, it's not the situation, it's how we think about the situation. So in CBT, we try to work with clients to help them choose a perspective that's going to feel better for them, right? So I'll, I'll give you an example so that this becomes a little clear. Imagine, Suzanne, that you're driving home from work. It's, it's late. You're rushing because it's dinner time and maybe, you know, you're supposed to be, you were supposed to be home 15 minutes ago and you're behind somebody that's driving underneath the speed limit. Let's say the speed limit's 25 and they're going 20 miles an hour. Okay. So what's the thought that might come up for you in that situation? Um, I think, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I would probably be pulling my hair out of my head saying, come on, speed it up. Let's go. Like, what are we doing here? Um, exactly. but I, and I often try to think, you know, they're, they're slowing down for a reason. Um, and, um, you know, they're, they're doing what they have to do. And so just maybe there's a reason that I need to go slower. Um, um so. Very big of you. I'll, I'll say that I would stay more with the, the beginning part of that, which is, yes, sort of like that. I got to get home. I'm going to be late. This is like, you know, kind of a little bit of a disaster or whatever, right? We have some of those thoughts. And as a result of those thoughts, how do we feel in that moment? We feel irritated. We're frustrated, right? Mm -hmm. We're impatient. Yep. And then what do we typically do? Well, some of us, might actually inch a little closer as if that's going to make them go faster. Some of us might honk our horn. Um, so the response is not very helpful for us. Would you agree? Yep. Okay. Definitely. 
so now we have the same exact situation. You're driving home, you're a little late, you know, dinner's on the table, you're anxious to get home. But this time I'm going to tell you that your thought is kind of what you said before. Oh, maybe it's a 16 year old on their way home from DMV with a fresh license, right? Mm -hmm. So now what might like that thought elicit in terms of emotion, you might feel more patient, you may be even a little nostalgic, right? Mm -hmm. And then as a result, your response might be to actually go home a different way, to pull back, right? So you can think that, that, that response is probably a little more uh, productive and helpful, mm -hmm. right? Okay, that's so right. that's sort of the idea, right? That we get to choose our perspective around things. Mm -hmm. um, so with CBT, that can be really helpful with our kids when they're feeling anxious about something, especially if you have older kids, because they can, they can articulate this process a little more easily than younger kids. But with an older child, I may have them, you know, talk a little bit about the situation, hear them out in terms of how they're experiencing that it, and then actually help them to reframe some other ways to think about it and show them that perhaps some of these other ways to think about this is going to feel better for you, right? And with practice, you can get into a better mindset when you feel anxious about something because you have some of these tools to kind of reframe it, right? Mm -hmm. The situation, you can't do much about the situation, right? But you can take some ownership around the perspective you choose. And that's sort of the idea behind CBT. Okay, another very empowering tool um, to, to help your children have that um, way of thinking, a, a much more positive, really, way of thinking. Yeah, things. that's exactly what it is. It's just a different framework to see the stressor. And kids need coaching around that, um, just like adults do. But so that could be something that a parent could start to practice and then model and then actually teach. That's great. That's great. I'm a big advocate for um, uh, modeling things and really doing it on your own um, because I think it's good to see the ch for children to see parents struggle sometimes with something um, and then be able to do it and um, you know having those experiences actually together makes a stronger bond too um, for for the parent and child. So um, really wonderful. Um, so uh, my last question for you, Andre, is what's the most important piece of advice that you can give parents when it comes to parenting an anxious child? Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I, there's a lot of great strategies you can use, and I could offer you, you know, 10 really concrete, specific ones. But I would say to you that it's less important to me about the strategy and more about helping to support your child through the anxiety, right? We know that our inclination when we feel something that's anxiety provoking is to either step back to pull out or step to the side, right? And we know that in the short term, there's relief there. But the problem is in the long term, the anxiety persists and it can actually become worse. So I try to work with clients in really gently supporting them through the anxiety, right? And that doesn't mean as a parent, we sort of shove our kid through it, right? We can do sort of things in baby steps, but the idea is it's always forward moving. You're always making some movement through the anxiety with the idea that you'll get through it, right? And then repetition makes it so that eventually our kids start to understand that, okay, this doesn't feel good for me, but I know I can get through it because I got through it last time, even if the situation was different. Every time they move through an anxiety provoking moment and they get out from it, mm -hmm. that reinforces the behavior so that when they feel anxious or stressed again, they're more inclined to kind of move through it as, a, as opposed to retreating. So I think that would be my most important message around kind of parenting an anxious child is just really support them through it. The goal is to get them through it, not to pull them out of it. Right, 
Right, which is hard as a parent to do that because we just, we don't want our children to ever hurt or be in pain or feel anxious. Um, right. And sometimes the anxiety that they feel produces anxiety in us. So for sure, for sure. And so that actually then would lead to my second point, which is my second most important thing is we are such important role models for our kids. So any way that we can model movement through anxiety is so important for our kids. And, you know, don't be afraid to be explicit about what you're doing, you know, show your kids through your own language. Like, oh, I was really nervous about this. And here's what I did for myself to get through it. And, oh, I feel so good that I did it. Like that kind of modeling is so impactful on our kids. Well, thank you so much. I found this extremely helpful, Andre, um, and I really appreciated the conversation. Uh, and I hope everybody else who watches this um, feels the same. So great. thank you. You're so welcome. It was great to be with you.